Well, hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Simeon here with you. Thanks for joining me today. I want to talk a little bit about parallel realities. I know, it's one of your favorite subjects, right? Um, there have been some discussions recently that I've seen on Facebook and other places where people have this very dismissive attitude towards the whole idea of multiverses, parallel realities, and ideas that go in that sort of direction. And I just want to set the record straight here. Uh, there is increasing evidence for parallel realities, increasing interest in physicists studying this topic. And there's nothing really weird about it or strange. People have this sort of uh, derisive attitude towards the whole topic as if it's kind of way out there, kind of strange. I think you know what I'm talking about. Uh, this comes up with the topic of UFOs a lot. And people say, you know, this idea of alternate parallel realities, alternate dimensions and so forth. It's just philosophy, you know, it's metaphysics. There's no science behind it and they dismiss it as some authors do in one or two sentences. But there's nothing could be farther from the truth. The whole idea of parallel realities started in our recent era in science with Hugh Everett, uh, the third graduate student at Princeton at the time. In the 1950s, I've talked about this in some of my other YouTube lectures, and he created what we now refer to as the many worlds um, idea, the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. But you have to understand, calling it an interpretation is looking at it from the point of view of the existing Copenhagen uh, uh, concept of quantum mechanics, which says that there's only one reality which you and I are in, and even though the Schrodinger wave uh, function describes many possibilities, many states of any group of subatomic particles, that those all kind of disappear once a measurement is made and we end up with this particular reality. And we don't need to think about that too much or question it, it's just the way things are, that there is no quantum reality. There's this, this classical world we see and there's something called quantum measurement and even though the probability descriptions you get from quantum mechanics suggest many, many possibilities for any group of particles, you know, you only get one, which is what you see once you make a measurement. And some people refer to this as the disappearing worlds theory. But you really have to ask if you're being scientifically honest is where do the disappearing worlds go in quantum mechanics? And many people over the years have found that interpretation to be unsatisfying. Most recently, Sean Carroll in his book, Simply, Something Deeply Hidden, Quantum Realities and the Emergence of Space-Time, something like that. And uh, in Something Deeply Hidden, Sean Carroll makes an argument that the many worlds interpretation originally created by Hugh Everett is actually the simplest interpretation of quantum mechanics. It's the most basic interpretation of quantum mechanics. In other words, that any time particles and systems interact, there's a whole wave of possibilities of what could be going on there. And even though we only perceive one version of that at any particular instance in time, it's because our limited perception and our limited viewpoint on the entire process that we're a part of. After all, if you think about it, you and I are made up of particles and subatomic particles, right? That evolve in a kind of a wave function too. So you and I are also in superpositions. And even though we don't perceive ourselves in superpositions, most of the time in our daily conscious life, we do have instances where we feel like we are in a superposition. I think you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever done any remote viewing, what I call resonant viewing, had any precognitive dreams, experiences of knowing something ahead of time that you had no linear or conscious way of explaining how you knew that. Those, to me, seem to be examples where you do get this kind of superposition effect in your own awareness. And that is kind of consistent with this many worlds approach. Now, even if you look at it from the point of view of what's going on with kind of formal, uh, traditional science right now, scientists are looking, as I've mentioned recently, at the idea of a mirror universe 
to explain this parity violation in uh, neutrons. There are only uh, left-handed neutrons with a left-handed spin, and we don't see the other right-handed spin neutrons, even though we see this with all other particles that we know about. And some scientists, including those working right now at Oak Ridge National Laboratories, which, by the way, used to be part of the Manhattan Project, was one of the central facilities for creating the atomic bomb. Uh, they've been looking at this parity violation and this sort of missing uh, neutron scenario where we don't have the neutrons decaying at the proper rate that they should. They seem to be decaying a little too quickly, and some scientists think that they're actually sharing themselves with another parallel reality. They're going popping into this other reality and coming back to ours very quickly. And experiments are actually being done right now to see where these missing neutrons are. And the interesting thing is it kind of connects to dark matter and this parallel neutron uh, universe, which is actually in the same space where you and I are right now. Uh, it would hypothetically have five times as much matter as we have, it would actually explain what we call dark matter, which is something like 85% of our matter in our universe is unexplained, hidden, we can't see it, it has gravitational effects, but we don't interact with it in any other way. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that there are very rigorous scientific tests being done right now to determine if we are right next to parallel realities. Uh, there's also, uh, you know, events and phenomena at cosmological scales that scientists are looking at unexplained um, neutrino emissions things like that that come from very far away in our universe but don't seem to have any origin some scientists think maybe they're coming from a parallel reality uh, in a previous video i mentioned how some scientists have suggested that the tunguska explosion of 1908 that huge explosion over an area in Siberia that flattened trees, some of which still have not grown back to this day, uh, that that is coming from some sort of parallel reality neutrino blast. So the point I'm trying to make is uh, there are scientific ways of actually determining how these parallel realities uh, might interact with ours. And again, going back to quantum mechanics, uh, as it's initially created a um, hundred years ago, if we just look at the fundamental mathematics of it, it describes parallel realities, many worlds, and that's why people like Hugh Everett and Sean Carroll and others like Max Tegmark are kind of in favor of that approach because that's the basic quantum description of our universe without adding anything in like wave collapse or any ad hoc ideas that have to be added in if you try to make it seem like there's nothing else going on. But the Schrodinger wave function describes many possibilities, and there isn't anything in physics that says that the other possibilities disappear. I think that they do show up. They show up with all these so-called paranormal phenomena, and I think, you know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of phenomena that we have a lot of good evidence for, uh, UFOs and unexplained anomalous animals like Bigfoot which seem to appear and disappear don't just seem to be the characteristics of ordinary animals that we're used to you know precognitive experiences psychokinesis a lot of really well-documented phenomena that don't have any very good explanations seem to me evidence for lead through our interaction with other realities that seem to show up and disappear. Now, that is a big difference from the traditional many worlds idea because in the Everett idea of many worlds and what Sean Carroll is talking about and Max Tegmark, these parallel realities do not interact again. Once they kind of split off from each other, they don't interact again. It's because the Schrodinger wave function and many other features of physics and quantum mechanics are linear, we can't allow these parallel realities to interact. But there are newer interpretations of uh, many worlds. I've talked about some of them here, the many interacting worlds theory created by Howard Wiseman from uh, Australia and several other physicists uh, have proposed that in, 
fact, these parallel realities do interact very slightly in the, the MIW model, many interacting worlds model, they interact through electron repulsion from parallel realities. But when you model these systems, they end up with the exact same predictions as quantum mechanics, which is very interesting because uh, you can take quantum mechanics as is and make it slightly nonlinear and you still get the wave function. Uh, the predictions of these models still are consistent with what we see with the experimental evidence. So at this point, we don't really know if there really is a wave function or if we just have all these parallel realities interacting very slightly, producing what appears to be a wave function. But uh, this nonlinear interpretation of quantum mechanics actually has a name going back several decades. Steven Weinberg called it the Everett phone. How about that Everett phone? That these many worlds can communicate a little bit and you can get a call from Everett in a parallel reality. So physicists are really talking about this, and that's really the point here, is this is actually a real serious debate, whether you do have many worlds, whether these many worlds even interact a bit, which seems to me would be consistent with what scientists are actually trying to determine now with maybe one parallel reality, the mirror neutron universe, or many parallel realities. And then you've got all these paranormal uh, phenomena that you and I have been looking at, if you're familiar with my channel, that I think have very excellent uh, scientific evidence to back them up. Um, in some cases with remote viewing, like about 100 years of experiments that show that people can get non-local information at a much higher level of statistical significance than you would expect if they were just guessing. I wouldn't be doing all this for years with remote viewing if I didn't think it was effective and have, you know, I've seen people do amazing uh, feats of description of things that they won't see for half an hour or an hour. So I think that sort of data is consistent with the Everett phone. But the point is, uh, however this works out, I don't know exactly how it's going to work out, but I can tell you, I think this parallel reality idea has a strong theoretical basis in science and good experiments are being designed right now to test whether these are possibly real or not. And uh, as far as I can see, the interest in this area just keeps growing. Just recently, this week, I read about this so-called mysterious X-17 particle, a particle that's hypothesized to exist to explain uh, beryllium-8 decay, or the way beryllium-8 decays into helium. It's not kind of doing it the way it should according to the four laws of physics. The particles are not diverging at 180 degrees, but kind of a different angle, 155 degrees. Well, why does that matter? Because it's this t tiny discrepancy in the existing physics model that's gonna show us that something else is going on. In this case, the particle, the, excuse me, the physicists that are interested in this X17 particle, they're calling it X17 because it's like a multiple of the weight of the electron 30 times, three, 33 times the energy of an electron. Um, that these uh, scientists actually speculate that there's a fifth force beyond the four laws that we're familiar with in physics, a fifth force that interacts with dark matter. So I think you can see where this is all going. Increasing interest in dark matter, possibly dark energy, new particles, new forces of physics, parallel realities. This is the direction that physics is going in at the moment. Now, if you still encounter people or you're one of these people that doesn't think there's anything to this, I think you're just ignoring the evidence because increasingly there's good theory, there's good evidence that parallel realities are a serious subject of study. And of course, in the whole area of UFOs that I've been interested in for about 20 years, this could explain some of these objects, why the occupants kind of look similar to us rather than very different. You remember in my previous video here, we were talking about the Jacques Vallée uh, question with several other authors about why we should expect ETs even to look like us if they're from really far away. Why wouldn't we expect them to be even a non-physical type of consciousness? But if you look at a lot of these reports of people's encounters with the occupants of these unexplained aerial vehicles, I've written about it in Black Swan Ghost, but there are obviously many, many other good authors who've written about this subject in many cases the occupants often look a lot like us. So why is that? Isn't that kind of consistent with parallel realities? Possibly. Anyway, 
It's just food for thought. It's something I thought I wanted to share with you. And um, anyway, I'm curious about what you think about it. These are just my ideas, but uh, put your uh, comments in the box below. Of course, like and subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care for now and bye.